Hello there. So we've all seen Peter Jackson's brilliant film trilogy, and even possibly the books as well of The Lord of the Rings. And in it we see many different characters doing brave, heroic deeds. So today we're going to have a look at one specific uh, character trait shared by many people in this film and book series, their nobility. Uh, in particular we're going to be looking at why Eowyn is the most noble of the Rohirrim. So in this video we will be investigating why Eowyn is the noblest of the Rohirrim. So before we uh, have a look at what makes Eowyn noble, it is worth having a look at her past. So she was born in uh, TA 2995 and was the daughter of Eomund and Theodwin and has an older brother Eomer. So seven years later, in TA 3002, Theodin, the king of Rohan, and also her uncle would begin to raise Eowyn and her brother Eomer as both their parents had died at that point. So Eowyn uh, grew up in Metsula in the uh, realm of Rohan and she grew up to be a shield maiden and in this growing up she dreamt of valour and honour. So her most notable accomplishments will be discussed in much more detail later on. There's a quick um, summary, these do include caring for her sick uncle, leading the people of Rohan and the big one, the one that most of us can probably quote from the film of I Am No Man, she slays the Witch King of Angmar during the Battle of the Palinor Fields. And once uh, what the Lord of Rings is concluded, after Sauron is defeated, she then marries Faramir, the son of Denifer, and gives birth to her son, Elberon, having given up her desire for combat. So now we know a little bit about Erwin. Can we describe her as the most noble out of all the Rohirrim? Well, this is what we'll look at now investigating her position, her qualities and accomplishments to see if the claim of most noble is well deserved. So first of all we will look at what nobility actually is. So according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, someone who is noble is of high birth or exalted rank. So this is a, a lazy measure of Irwin's nobility because she did not earn this at all, she was just born into a noble family. But it does still help the case of her being the most noble as opposed to other noble members of the Rohirrim, like uh, Hammer, who was not of noble birth. So Erwin was born as a niece to the King of Rohan, which does qualify giving her noble birth. So not only was Erwin born of high birth, but she also reached an exalted rank. So when Theoden was leading the fight in Helm's Deep against the masses of Saruman's forces, Erwin was tasked with leading the people into the caves for safety. So again, when Fielden was preparing to ride to aid Gondor, he put Eowyn in charge of his estate. Uh, Eowyn was then put in charge of Rohan uh, to care for the people and lead them. And once the war had finished, she ruled with Faramir in Ithilien. So not only was Eowyn born of high birth, but she was also loved and respected enough to take a high position, a noble role of steward on behalf of King Fielden, which also gave her an exalted rank, making her a noble woman. So the second part of the definition of noble um, simply is possessing outstanding qualities. So this means that Erwin's character and her traits uh, can also make her worthy of being the noblest of the Rohirrim. So the qualities we will explore for Erwin are her sacrificial nature, her loving nature and her courageous nature. Sacrificial nature. So Erwin was a shield maiden of Rohan. She sought valour and honour in combat, the chance to do great deeds, fearing only a cage to stay behind until youth and old age accept them, and all chance of doing great deeds is gone beyond recall or desire. So this sums up what she wanted. She wanted a chance to do great deeds, and saw the opportunity to do so upon the battlefield, where she could ride and wield a blade with high degrees of skill. She sacrificed her dreams, though, continuously out of love for her king and her people. She wanted to fight her home's deep, but instead led the people into the safety of the caves, losing the opportunity for glory. In the film, on the way to Helm's Deep, the same thing happened. Warg riders were uh, ambushing the king and his troops, and Eowyn has to give up the opportunity to fight, and has to lead the people to uh, Helm's Deep for safety. So all these moments show that Eowyn is committing self-sacrifice and is putting the needs and desires of her king and people above her own desires, giving her a sacrificial nature and making her noble. So that was the Eowyn sacrificial nature, and now we're going to look at her loving nature. So one thing we're going to find as we go through all the different personality traits is a lot of them do overlap. So Eowyn's sacrificial nature may simply just the reason from her loving nature. So when uh, Grima Wormtongue and Saruman had poisoned Fielden's mind, 
Eowyn was there to care for him, and also his son after he was wounded by orcs. So even Gandalf sees as much as this, as he says to Eomer, She being born in the body of a maid, had a spirit and courage at least to match of yours, yet she was doomed to wait upon an old man, whom she loved as a father. So this love was mostly shown by submitting to Theoden's will and obeying his requests, but it was also shown quite deeply during the Battle of the Palinor Fields. Just to set the scene, the Witch King of Angmar has engaged Theoden and his company in combat. In Nazgul, a being that strikes fear into the hearts of all, Theoden lies powerless and dying as the Witch King advances. Eowyn stands alone, desperate to save her father figure. So we're going to leave it there, but we will return to this shortly, and the company will remain focused on Eowyn's living nature. She loved her king so much she was willing to fight and die for him. Let's fast forward a bit to after the war for the ring, Eowyn once again shows her living nature, and she does this by renouncing the way of the shield maiden, saying, She won't take joy only in the songs of slaying. I will be a healer, and live all things that grow and are not barren. So after having her full share of death and sadness, Eowyn wants to help people, so becomes a healer and shares her love for all life, ultimately gives her a noble character. So now we're going to move on to Eowyn's courage. So courage is probably the most common trait people would associate with Eowyn, but then again, courage would also be associated with many of us that do a hero. So having a courageous nature is definitely an outstanding quality, and definitely did allow Eowyn to achieve great feats. So now we return to the Battle of the Palinor Fields, Theoden's wounded, and who stood before the Nazgul and his prey? Eowyn. She stared down a mightier opponent, whom no living man may hinder, and after slaying his fell beast, she boasted, No living man am I. You look upon a woman, Eowyn. I am Eowyn's daughter. You stand between me and my lord and kin. Be gone, if you be not deathless. For living or dark and dead, I will smite you if you touch him. And smite him she did, right through the face. Eowyn committed possibly the bravest deed on the battle, opposing a Nazgul and committing a deed worthy of song and recognition, and ultimately fulfilling Glorfindel's prophecy that says, No man will slay the Witch King, which Eowyn, a woman, does. So Eowyn wanted to be facing the same dangers as the men of Rohan were facing, as she feared neither death nor pain, but a cage. So all this shows that Eowyn had a courage to face physical dangers, but the more impressive one is her inner courage. She's honest with Aragorn. She's honest with her feelings, stating that she feared a cage, and also wasn't afraid to tell him how she felt. And fast forward after the battle with Palinor Field, she was honest with Faramir, a man she barely knew, being honest with him in the House of Healing about her fears, and how sad she was that she wouldn't be able to see the uh, men coming back from Mordor. So this courage to tell others of her vulnerabilities, it does have the potential to be a much greater courage than the physical danger she partook in purely because she wanted to chance to fight and to ride, but discussing inner vulnerabilities is something no one looks forward to. Now we're going to very briefly just look at her leadership qualities. So of all leadership does tie in slightly better with the first part of the noble definition of being born into a high rank. Ian wasn't necessarily born into this position of leadership, he was handpicked by the king herself. So when wanting to meet Saruman's forces, Theoden wanted someone to care for the people of Rohan, and Hamas addressed Eowyn, purely because all the people loved her. So as mentioned before, again looking at how sacrificial living nature does all tie all together, Eowyn puts the need of her people before her own, and was a good leader, getting her people to safety during Helm's Deep, all of us making her a noble leader. So therefore, in conclusion, Eowyn is definitely a noble woman, but is she the noblest of all the Rohirrim? So regarding her birth and rank, both Eoma and Theoden would be more noble, one being the king himself, and the other being the older brother, and next in line, as Theoden's son had died. So then regarding the other noble traits previously discussed, again, many of us also possess them, so no one can deny the courage of Theoden, who rides to Gondor's aid, of Eoma, also fighting down orcs in many battles, and in the film, hunting orcs down for his people. So Theoden, Eoma, Hammer and countless others are sacrificial, 
some giving their lives, others are loving and want to serve their king or the people. And when the courage shown at Helm's Deep and the Panama Field showed at Rohan, it was full of noble, brave people. So what makes Erin stand out is that she was unable to make her dreams a reality. So in her own words, she was always being left behind when all the other reminders rolled out. She was being left to mind the house whilst the warriors won renown. So unlike the other warriors who could pursue their dreams of achieving great feats on the battlefield, Erin was not able to do this. Well, Erin was once able to meet this dream by unfortunately disobeying her king, disguising herself as Dernholm and assisting Gondor. But then after achieving combat and doing mighty deeds, she renounced this way. Seeing the suffering caused her to reevaluate her goals and to become a Gahira and to help people in many, many ways, allowing her to describe her as noble. So was it a really noble? Yes. Was she the noblest of the Rohirrim? Not even for you to decide. So what then? I'll speak to you again.